All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another amazing episode of Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast. This is your host, Brian, a.k.a. El Nino, and today I'm joined with Jamie and Jake from Strictly Stalking Podcast. Jamie and Jake, how are you two doing today? Good, how are you? Doing great, doing great. Doing Jake, great. how are you doing, bud? I'm doing good, Brian. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you two so much for, uh, you know, joining me today. A little backstory. I uh, found Jamie's Instagram just kind of, you know, doing a little search or whatnot. And I saw this, this podcast show up strictly stalking. So I was interested in it. And a lot of people that know me know that I don't listen to a lot of other podcasts. It's not an arrogance thing. It's just, uh, you know, I get, I get kind of tired and I'm more of a hip hop and death metal kind of guy. So I put, I put theirs on and the first episode, literally within the first like couple minutes, I was, I was hooked and it was a, a fantastic story. I'll, I'll let you guys kind of tell this story a on, on how this whole thing got started and B, you know, how were you able to find your first guest? Cause I think that's very integral as far as, getting people submersed into, you know, what you're trying to do with the podcast. Yes, that's a, that was a great intro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you how it got started. Uh, I really wanted to do a podcast uh, and there's a million true crime podcasts out there. Mm -hmm. So as I often do, I called Jake to complain about him or to complain to him. <laughs> no, that, that's actually true. She complained about me to me, but then she also had another agenda. So there we go. Uh, no, I, I called to complain because I really wanted to do one and I felt like everybody was doing what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And so he said, um, well, no one's doing stalking. Why don't you do that? And I was like, no. And I hung up um, <laughs> because I just wanted, most things I just wanted to say no. All true story, actually. Uh, 100% accurate. 100%. 100%. <laughs> and then I started researching it because, you know, stalking is such an underreported crime. Like, I really just didn't know much about it, to be honest. Sure. Um, so I started researching it. And I was like, wow, like, this needs to be out in the light. People need to know more about what's going on um, and be able to find a spot to get help. And the laws aren't good enough, you know. So I stayed up uh, and, and worked on a pitch deck. And I sent it back to Jake a few days later. And then um, we brought it to our friends over at Cast Media and they are amazing over there and picked it right up and we've been working with them since. Nice. That's all fact. <laughs> <laughs> so after all that, she was like, Jake, you gotta help me out with this. <laughs> well, basically it's like at first I wasn't uh, you know, interested necessarily being a host, truthfully sure. of a podcast. I'm not really in front of the camera kind of guy, yeah, but uh, right she you. said, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know that, Brian. Um, <laughs> and so you ha you, it's almost like you have to from a utility standpoint of, right. of do these things is like, well, there's nobody else gonna do it. But in this case, obviously I love working with Jamie. Obviously we make a great team when it comes mm. to production and ideas and everything true crime. So I was like, all right, let's try this out. So it's probably for me anyway, when we jumped into the, the hosting part, one of the most challenging parts of, of anything I've ever done, to be honest with you. Wow. Um, because, you know, you know, this is like being a host. More like challenging than just hanging out with me on a regular basis. <laughs> or? That, that, that's abrasive, but the actual, I'm talking about the actual meat and bones of our podcast. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but basically uh, that, you know, finding a way into that, that, you know, path, it's like, you know, you have a whole new set of instincts that you have to use with guests and everything else like that. And also, as you said before, um, it's, it's, it was difficult at first to find these stories because so many people didn't want to come forward and so many, sure. you know, victims of stalking who we call survivors, um, suffer in silence. So we decided to bring something forth and be able to put something together that would allow them a sort of a venue in order to share their stories with uh, the public. Yeah. And honestly, I, I think that's truly amazing too. And I mean, I've, I was reading over some of rev your reviews and it seems like this is something that, I mean, you really hit on something here because stalking does exist, whether you're male or female. I mean, it's definitely out there. And just like you said, Jake, I mean, a lot of people don't, you know, maybe too embarrassed or whatnot to come forward, but just from the feedback that I've seen it, I mean, it seems like you've struck a chord with a lot of people in a good way. Like, thank you. You know, it's almost like how it used to be very, I don't want to say like, I can't think of the term for it. when, when, when you weren't allowed to talk about like depression, things like that, it's starting to seem like, you know, now more and more it, it's being acceptable. And if someone has suffered from depression, like myself, I get it. And I'm glad that it is. But you know, I, from the reviews, like I said, I'm, I'm very happy for you too, because it seems like a lot of people are coming forward. And now it's not just easier to get guests on, but easier for people to open up about their experiences. And to me, it seems like it's a good release and escape for them to, to let the world know like, hey, listen, 
here are the red flags, here's what's going on, and here's how you can hopefully try to prevent it one day. Well, that's, that's a really good point, Brian. Um, Jamie and I wanted to start a conversation about this, about this topic, and, and as she'll tell you, we both like to talk a lot, probably too much. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jamie. Jake talks way too. <laughs> Jake talks way too much. Um, but no, but you you bring up good points. I think there's a lot of topics that um, you know in recent years people are shedding light on. I think social media has a ton to do with that because yeah. you know people are like, well, there's a community you can build. There's a message you can actually really connect with people and not feel so isolated, not feel so alone, um, which is ironic considering the conditions we're in in the country right now. Right, <laughs> isolated, right. alone, shelter in place. But other than that, normally, um, it's great to get these conversations started uh, from that standpoint. Agreed. Agreed. So how um, Kathleen Gallagher was, was your first episode, your, I, I take it your first guest on the show. So how, how did you come about that process as far as, you know, actually getting your, your first person to, you know, tell their story? We actually, um, I don't think she was the first person we interviewed. Um, we had a couple episodes already ready to go before okay. we started we, releasing. Didn't, didn't we do um, the, the, mo the, the movie, the Allison Hannigan movie, uh, one of the, the author of the screenwriter and the... yet, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> well it's not released that's why we're breaking right it here first <laughs> exactly anyway. zero doc nerdy we break it on here <laughs> anyway it. um no you know what we we kind of just started researching we researched um the news what was on the news and yeah. um you know who was already speaking out uh that we could that would be willing to talk to us because until we started releasing the podcast and people started listening to it um we couldn't we, there's no way to find anybody that wasn't already out and talking about it. So mm -hmm. we went ahead and found, um, you know, people that were already within that community, you know, that were doing mm -hmm. something, um, you know, working with the, the laws, changing the laws, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I noticed that was a big theme with, and I, like I said, I thought that was a great episode to start out with too, because her story, it was what, like more late nineties, correct? So this is before a lot of, a laws even really came into place. So she was kind of at the forefront. And then I, you know, I noticed that she was also like a big speaker and a big advocate on this, obviously, because, you know, her, her ordeal, I mean, it, to me as a dude listening, it was kind of horrific, like eight years. And even though that this guy, he would get locked up, you know, like six months or a year at a time, it was almost like the Michael Myers thing to where she didn't know when she was allowed to step out of the house. And and this guy was there. So, yeah. you know, it definitely made me feel for him. And, and uh, you know, on top of that, it was, like I said, it was a great first episode to draw you in, but just a great episode, you know, for someone like me who, even though I have a podcast, I don't listen to a ton of them. I'm like, I'm definitely going to check this one out now. And, you know, especially because I have a daughter and I'm like, hey, you need to listen to stories like this because I love how you guys really talk about, you know, while you let the people like that are on your show do their thing is that you pick up on those red flags, like what you need to look out for, which I think is more important nowadays more than ever is looking out for red flags, whether if you're a male or female. Yeah, we, we try to touch on that a lot um, in every episode because a lot of it is prevention. I mean, you can't, obviously, a lot of these people are sick. They can't, you can't right. stop them ahead of time. Right. Um, but there are things that you can do to help prevent, you know, like Jake's favorite, don't geotag anywhere. <laughs> she so likes I, to say, I say that, that every episode. Don't geotag anywhere. Uh, you As know, I'm geotagging everywhere I'm at. You, you do do that. Jamie, some of the things, Jamie, you should probably follow the advice that we, we list on the podcast. But um, I definitely know, should. But. Yeah. No, but and, and that's the whole thing, too, is like what you're saying, Brian, is that, you know, a lot of these cases are not one and done. Most people right. think stalking is an isolated incident, how the way right. they see it in movies. There's somebody who's obviously sticking out like a sore thumb. And a lot of times it's somebody, you know, it's, it's a, you know, a former relationship, uh, it's somebody they may sure. or may not have even ever met. Uh, yeah. So you find these scenarios come up in daily life. So we tried to basically reach out to a lot of different voices within the anti-stalking community to be able to kind of, you know, open up the floodgates and be able to help, you know, connect us with people that are willing to share these stories. So other people in their situation know they're not alone. Yeah. And like I said, I think it's, it's amazing what you two are doing. I just saw that you released another episode today. I can't wait to check this one out. So just Yay. off the title alone. So it's <laughs> our mother's ex-boyfriend and it's stalking two sisters. So if you can just give like, like a, just a quick little, I don't want to say recap of like synopsis yeah. of what people have in store. Cause I saw the title and I'm like, okay, I got to listen <laughs> to this one. So, well, it's funny because, um, one of the sisters, Alice is actually a really good friend of mine and okay. has been for years. 
years. That's why um, I'm laughing. Probably so many years. <laughs> not not uh, at we, the actual title of the right, subject, sorry. Right, right. Right. Um, and she, I mean, she used to live with me. We used to be roommates. Um, so, you know, I started doing this and she came to me and she was like, you know, this happened to me. And um, so me and Jake were like, yeah, let's, let's do it. Like, this is crazy. And um, basically it's kind of in the title. Jake does all the titles and descriptions and he does really well. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm allowed to sister. do such things on this project, <laughs> by the way. I get permission once a week. There you go. There you go. Stalked by, uh, their mom's ex-boyfriend when they were kids. Like it, it's so creepy. It's like one of those, like, you know, where you're home alone and right. you live out in the woods and it's dark out so they can see in, you can't see out, but there's someone standing outside the window. Like it's that kind of shit. Like it's the creepy Jeez. shit, you know? Like, I mean, imagine if, if, if you, you know, one of your, your mother or father had like a live in lover right? and that lover was this, this person, you know what I'm saying? Like right. always you, and you didn't know, and you always kind of second guess your instincts. And this is the kind of thing that they both face. They, they thought as we're going through this, that, oh, I'm just being paranoid. Oh, it, I'm, I'm just going through some sort of you know, psychological thing, but it's not really there. But in reality, it was. And, and this guy was doing this to them for like years and years and years. Super Jeez. creepy. Yeah. But it's crazy. also, I mean, it's weird. Like who stalks kids? Right. And right. you kind of know what kind of people stalk kids. Like. Right. But yeah, also, no, you know, we haven't really had that. Um, we haven't dealt with that yet. So we yeah. thought that was an interesting thing because, I mean, kids can be stalked too. Anybody can. No, and, and you said it right there, and that's the thing. Anybody can be a victim to this, whether male, female, you know, kids, and it's unfortunate. So to me, you know, I'm I'm really glad that that you guys are really spreading the light on this, and I'm you know I'm surprised nobody else has before, and I couldn't pick two better people to be doing this. You know, like I said, I was I was hooked on the first episode. It's rare that anything does that. You know, even TV shows don't hook me on the first episode, but. Your podcast hooked me on the first one, and I've been kind of bragging about it to my friends. I'm like, y'all know I don't listen to a lot of podcasts, but you got to check this one out. <laughs> we appreciate it. Have you ever had any anybody in your life uh, ever come to you or have any of these a situation like this with the stalker? We're always curious to ask people. Sure, sure. Um, I have bartended. Just a little backstory on me. I bartended for about 15 years, so you hear of course, all, all kinds of things as a bartender and just being a bartender in the service industry can be a, uh, a, a frightful thing at times. Um, so, you know, that being said, I, I've definitely had people approach me as far as their stories and, and, and kind of wild fantasies of this person thinks that they're dating me. I've even had people tell me, hey, listen, I, this person I am dating. And in my mind, I'm like, you're, you're not dating this person. Like, you may think that you're dating this person, but you are not because of just certain circumstances or whatnot. So I've definitely seen a little bit of everything. Luckily, I've been fortunate enough to not see, you know, have to go to court or anything like that as far as for anybody I've ever talked to or spoken to on anything like that. But it's it's definitely uh, around, uh, you know, especially, like I said, being in the service industry, there's bar, there's beer and liquor flowing. So you hear all kinds of stories. So at the same time, you, you got to take a little bit with a grain of salt too. But, yeah. um, you know, nothing to the point to where it was incredibly serious and if it was you know uh without saying anything uh, me and my friends would have to you know take care of a couple things so <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that's just how we roll <laughs> well, th that's what i was gonna say too is like you know you had the alcohol you had the environment you had yeah. the circumstances everybody wants to keep a calm collected nature um in those situations like because you know bar fights break out and things like oh, that yeah. so I, I think a lot of these things go Jake, when was the last too. time you were in a bar it's been a bit Jamie. well now i mean i'm, I'm okay, going nowhere when's the last Raw time i was in my down. bathroom like 20 minutes ago how about that or my living room or my dining Wait, room you okay? keep liquor in your bathroom too <laughs> yeah, I do in the toilet tank. Yeah, of course. You know that. You know that. When you were out of what vodka, remember that happened last last <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> no, but it, it's like in those in those scenarios, um, a lot of it goes underreported. I think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying in terms yeah. of by the the patrons and this and that. Um, so you see a lot of that, but. Um, it can happen in any circumstance, academically, sure. at home, um, out, you know, things like that. Now with, you know, everything online dating, I think that there's a lot more harassment and there's a lot more that, you know, both men and women have to deal with. Oh, gosh, um, yeah. And, you know, and, and that, you know, goes on, can go on for years and cost, you know, thousands of dollars in court and, and other, you know, uh, things they have to pay for. Yeah. Well, and I think people don't realize all the time what uh what stalking is, like when when they're being 
stopped. Like, and it's embarrassing. It's weird. It's, um, it's kind of, you feel ashamed. Like, what did I do? Like, why is this person doing this to me? Right. But obviously it's never the victim's fault. But when do you start going to the cops? Like even, I mean, like I've got some, you know, some people that message me a lot online to where I'm like, okay, like I get right. it, but like you, you know, it's never going to work out. So it's like, <laughs> You don't have to message every day, you know, that kind of right. thing. But it's like, I'm, when do you start, you know, going to the cops or trying to get restraining orders, things like that. And I think that what we're trying to do is bring light to that. So you mm. do know kind of when and where to go. Like I, I wouldn't have known before we started doing the research. I wouldn't have known like what to do if I was being stalked, you know? Sure. Sure. I mean, and that's a very valid point too. I think that that's what you're help bringing to light is, you know, when should you, and I mean, of course it, it's also the reverse factor too, where people are accused of stalking and they're not. And, you know, so there's, I've, I've definitely seen that at the bar where it's just a terrible breakup and the person's embarrassed and they're like, oh, well, so-and-so's crazy. He wouldn't leave me alone or she wouldn't leave me alone. But I'm glad that you are actually spreading light on the stuff that's actually like really, really happening, not just the kind of fibbing out there and the proper steps that you should probably, you know, be taking. And I, you know, I feel for women all the time, to be honest with you, is because I see the, a lot of the stuff that people post out there and the DMs and stuff like that. And like the, the dick pics, it's like, come on. I you know what I mean? I don't get that many like, dick pics. I, I don't. <laughs> well, I'll be glad. Hopefully you won't now after this podcast. Let's, let's, yeah, not, let's not share her IG handle after this. I know person. I'll have to, I have to buzz her <laughs> yeah, face out, out and exactly. put her under a different you're, name you're now. Blurred, Jamie. Exactly. Well, my girlfriends are like, Oh, I got all these dick pics. I'm like, I got none. I have no dick pics. <laughs> yeah, consider yourself I mean, blessed. I don't want yeah. any. Right. I think. There you go. Well, you're obviously talking to a, to a classier set of men than, than yeah, most of yeah, my female absolutely. friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, as far as just getting a little bit know about you and, uh, you know, again, backstory for, for all of you just tuning in, whether watching on YouTube or listening to us, I was getting to know a little bit more Jamie and Jake before the show. And I really need to start taping kind of like the pre-show stuff just because I love the behind the scenes stuff whenever I'm watching DVDs or yes, I said DVDs. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Blu-rays, whatever it may be. But, um, you know, uh, and as I got to know them. So again, I mentioned before I saw that Jamie was a casting agent and I, I found out that Jake's a producer and they're actually a tandem. So just tell me a little bit, A, like how you guys met in the first place and, you know, some of the upcoming projects, I mean, pre, I guess, pre COVID or even after COVID that you'd like to be working on together. Uh, All right. You want to well, feel this, Jamie? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell the coloring book story? Oh, Jake loves telling these stories. It's an R-rated stories. podcast, he, so we'd rather just Jake, get the, okay, uh, no, we'd rather get the no, Skinamax version. It's not R-rated. No, it's, it's, it's not it's R-rated. Actually, it's actually PG like E.T. It's no, really that. We, that's, we, it's a we sweet met, story about an alien working woman on a film. and a normal guy. We um, met working on a film, and I try to give gifts to people who hire me, and it sounds mm. weird, uh, or whatever. But yeah, I, I gave him a serial killer coloring book because awesome. I like true crime and found out that he did as well. So that's kind of you know, how the friendship started. So it's great. It, it was like, I was like, this woman gets me. You know what I'm <laughs> and it wasn't the reaction from me that was surprising, but it was everybody when they saw what I was reacting to on set to a serial yeah. killer coloring book that there was some concern. I'll tell you that, Brian, there really was just a little bit. I was right? Most people, I get them a plant or something like that. <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't sure that Jake could take care of a plant. So. Yeah, that's true. That's right. I have very, very, very bad parenting skills considering I have no children. So, <laughs> yeah, I have one. I have one daughter, and believe me, she's enough. I cannot take care of plants. I can actually <laughs> take care of a kid better than a plant. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. So, I mean, how did you two get into the industry in the first place? And you know, let, Jamie, let's start with you, and then go to Jake. As far as you know, so I know that you just said that you met um, on set. So, what what movie or production was that? And then, how did you both get into the industry? Well, I was I was working for a small production company uh, doing like every job, doing everything um, and not getting paid shit, working like 20 hours a day. Uh, and so when that company went under, apparently I wasn't doing a very good job. Uh, so when that company went under, <laughs> um, I was like, you know, casting is the best part of my job. I love it. I love giving the good news. Like, Hey, you got the job. And you know, everyone loves a casting director and you know, you get to bring people up and give them like their shining moments. And you know, I just think it's so much fun. So I branched out and I started doing casting, um, which is difficult, you know, to get into. So I started sure. in reality shows, uh, which was interesting. It was an interesting time in my life. Um, but then from there, you know, I, I worked my way into scripted, which is, I'm much more happier in scripted. And 
I met I Jake it. on a Lifetime movie that he was producing and I was casting um, about a stalker, actually, a stalker nanny. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty nice. ironic and kind of uh, foretelling that we met on that <laughs> project about a stalker nanny and here we are now today. <laughs> <laughs> strictly stalking so jake how did how did you get into production in the first place and just kind of like your your little e true hollywood story here oh gosh okay <laughs> and i watch a ton of those as you can imagine bryce and some of pop culture i love oh, I oh, dude, shit I, out of those <laughs> dude i watched the brady bunch one last night i had seen that one in like 20 years and i just watched it again last night. um wow. basically uh i i went to i'm from st louis missouri so i went okay. to school out there uh for media script writing and everything else like that so i moved out here um, had no job, but already an apartment to pay rent on. So my mom said, you know what, you might want to get a one-way ticket and <laughs> ended up getting a, a job at a very crappy um, production company. Most people start out like at a crappy job or crappy company um, sure. that would, would use public domain footage to make entertainment shows. Okay. Uh, so they would make, imagine a mock A&E biography that would be like, you know, two ninety nine in the discount bin VHS at Blockbuster video. Uh, okay. There still was one. So that, that, <laughs> that guy, we're going back to our pop culture. Yeah, all right, all right, uh, Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. So basically from there, I just kind of worked my way up into post-production, did some stuff for like series like uh, Showtime, um, different uh, CBS, uh, different like specials, and then got an indie film. Wasn't making a really good living at it. Got into reality TV like Jamie did, um, still in post, and then started to get into independent production again, and then started you know making the film. So I had enough ex experience going through that process, and, and obviously being very fascinated within the 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 film world, TV, everything else, pop culture to uh to basically you know make it work and it's you know it's always feast or famine there's never yeah. any like well there's too much money on this project that never ha i don't care if you're jerry <laughs> bruckheimer or anybody below there's n nobody ever said well we got too much money how are we gonna how are we gonna s share it around or you know spread right. it around that never happens but um but ultimately especially not now i mean everybody's like yeah. you know like, like storing it up for winter but um yeah so that's kind of how i came about when i met with jamie you know she and i had a very um you know sort of in sync view of true crime projects. We're both, you know, true crime junkies. You can totally kill someone world. together. <laughs> Again, Jamie, as I said before, we do not say that in public. This is going oh, to be right. distributed worldwide. I've out. seen Bry's audience. He's got quite a few people listening. So yeah, I, I may have a few killers in my audience as <laughs> yeah, well. I was you never say. know. You I never might have know a couple on the show. <laughs> Um, no, you're right. But that's, that's the whole thing. So she and I have really, you know, formed a really strong partnership uh, when it comes to that. We both have very, you know, similar instincts about the true crime projects that we want to produce and, you know, things we're optioning and, and building up, uh, you know, within our little universe at uh, Creative and Depraved, our company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm actually glad you said that too, because I was going to bring up Creative and Depraved. I saw it on you guys' Instagram. So, you know, talk a little bit about Creative and Depraved. Well, Jamie is depraved and I'm creative. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, I, I wanted to see what you said, Jamie. That's why I didn't jump in. Yeah, Go ahead, I'm please. Fine. I'm fine with that. <laughs> So basically, uh, you know, we formed, we, we both opened up and closed a few companies in our day. It's not like okay. anything new to us, but from the standpoint of the kind of slate and what kind of things that attract us, it's usually um, true crime stories from a unique POV, you know, things okay. that you may have seen before. You know, everybody seems like every year a new Bundy project comes out, uh, right. and, you know, they're retelling this from a different POV. So they never who, get tired of Bundy. No one's tired of Bundy. Who, who, yeah. who, 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 yeah. Who doesn't want Bundy in their life? I mean, to be honest with you. So <laughs> whether Al, Ted, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Al, Al, there you go. Al, Ted, there you go. Um, but you know, finding that those kind of, you know, stories from the unique perspective, like maybe thing, you know, we, we've actually done some pretty deep research and found some, you know, mass killers that nobody's ever explored before stories. Like we mm. found one guy whose dad could have been a victim of this killer. His story was never told before. So it's a movie okay. that we have in development that's going to be um, going to production eventually. Um, and then also, you know, a lot of the other things is like, you know, what happens with the community around the crimes, you know, not just the actual criminals or the actual victims, but, but how does that send shockwaves through a community? Like Summer of yeah. Sam is a great example of that, the Spike Lee movie. I don't know if oh, that. agreed. Love that movie. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The yeah. whole neighborhood, you know, rallies and it showcases, you know, mm -hmm. right in the middle of a blackout in New York, you have this scenario where, oh yeah, there happens to be a uh, serial killer running around to <laughs> right. four days of darkness. So you've got that. And then the neighborhood and every borough kind of, you know, like kind of, you know, ganging up and trying to help this out. So um, and find this killer. So those are the kind of things we're interested in, you know, kind of a unique perspective. So she and I are 
just avid absorbers of all things true crime. Oh, that's that, that's amazing. I can definitely uh, try to send some true crime stories your way. Not from me, just uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, from what we see in, in the Carolinas. There's always something interesting. Oh, yeah, so. yeah, we I've, I've heard quite a few <laughs> stories out of the Carolinas. So we'll be talking to you after this podcast. I'm yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. At one, once we're off, we're once yeah. There you go. Here. Well, I mean, since since both of you are, are in the industry, and this is you know something I didn't really have written down here, but I do want to get your feedback on as it's relatively kind of fresh news. What, what is your take, and whoever wants to start first, on this entire, like, AMC and Regal Cinemas versus Universal thing? Because they released Trolls to where, you know, it's video on demand, so everybody had to pay $20 to rent Trolls. But apparently, AMC theaters and Regal Cinemas are both now, you know, banning any Universal projects from hitting their movie theaters. Like, just, just I mean, especially, like I said, because you're both in the industry. Like, what is your take on that? Because my friends and I have kind of talked about it, but... You know, to us, we're kind of like, I, I don't know if they're making a mistake. We don't really know. I, to me, I, I love the movie going experience. That's just me. I have just because I'm, I'm a child of the 80s and the 90s. And it, granted, I mean, I still love watching a, t- a movie in my couch, you know, that I could watch in the movie theater and pay 20 bucks. Great. But I actually do enjoy going to a movie theater or a drive-in. But just, you know, from you two, like, what is your kind of take on this little battle that that's kind of ensuing right now that just kind of started, I guess, what, the end of last week, maybe? You want to take this, Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> you, you can, go, you can okay. go first. Um, Unless you work I, for Universal, I don't know. <laughs> I know, I, I do. I have, I have at one time, at one okay. time, but I'm, I'm my contract's over. like, who have we worked for? Yeah, yeah. I, no, I, 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 can, I can be very candid with this. I, I think ultimately businesses need to make money. I yeah. think in this particular case, um, did Universal, were they impetuous by, by reacting too quickly? I, I think so. I think mm-hmm. so, but at the same point, I don't know what the agreement was with the theater. It seems like the theater had an agreement with Universal as a distributor. Universal may have broke that agreement. Right. And, you know, again, every insurance company out there now is, is, is either going to go broke or they're completely rejecting pandemic clauses. This is even in, in our industry because, right. you know, insurance pre-COVID is one thing. Insurance post-COVID is a whole nother ballgame. I mean, cost, right. premiums, everything else like that. Set preparedness. Jamie and I were talking about this the other day what kind of things you're going to have to do. It's going to take another two hours to prepare a set to shoot. And yeah. some of these projects you do, you got to get a lot of pages done a day, depending upon what kind of budget scale you're at. So yeah. um, there's challenges everywhere. So I think that ultimately I do believe universal was, I, I, Overall, I don't think it was a smart move, but I understand why they did it, to be sure. honest with you, because I think that, and also too, from an audience standpoint, you know, if there's some, if there's product the audience needs and it needs to get out there to the audience, you know, figure out a distribution model for it. You know what I'm saying? I don't right. think, you know, this should live and die by trolls. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like this whole, yeah. this whole argument. I mean, movie theaters have been suffering for years, unfortunately. The only thing right. that keeps them open are the tent poles, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things is like saying like, well, you know, if you had, um, can, a, can an independent bookseller sue Amazon for selling books? You know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. have those kind of things, but they didn't yeah. have an agreement with them. But I think Universal had, I don't know all the exact details, but they probably had an agreement to say we're going to exclusively through this chain distribute this when you have content and they broke that agreement so i think it's a little bit different in this wow. case i think there's no no other you know and all the other uh you know uh companies are following suit you're seeing yeah. stuff that's go vod and and stuff especially that truthfully may have not had a great performance at the box office even without COVID. right now right. we're actually doing quite well so i think that ultimately hopefully there's a way that they can you know play nice moving forward but um, you know, movie theaters are, are, are going to be a challenging place to visit regardless now at this point. And uh, the same way with, with production, um, you know, in our industry. So I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Dude, that's the first time Go Jamie's off. ever agreed with me. That's, I this mean, is, very well I, hey, I, I thank you, sir. Another zero dark nerdy exclusive. Know, right yeah, here. so am I, I, mean, you I heard it here first. very well said. No, I mean, I, I do agree. A lot of going on today. Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> I do agree. I mean, and I'd like to know, I mean, I think that everyone in that kind of moved too fast. Like, oh, now we're mad. We're going to do that. Like, right. you know, everyone just 
fucking calm yeah. down. That that, like, that was kind of my whole point about it. Like, and, you know, Jake, you brought up a great point too because I didn't think about the whole the, the contract part of it. You know, as far yeah. as distribution yeah. deals. Um. So yeah, because to me, just like Jamie said, I thought it was like very reactive. Like, holy shit! Like, yeah, they made all this money back, but we were supposed to release the movie, and now we can't. Where you know, every other studio, because you know, us even as Zero Dark Nerdy, like in Greensboro, we love doing movie premiere parties. Like, I've been talking with a lot of just kind of like the bigger ups in this town as far as bringing some kind of a film festival to north carolina because we don't really have one like oh, we have great. a couple pretty small ones but i'd like to i'm not saying like sundance but it'd be cool to bring something on the east coast kind of similar to it and north carolina is kind of smack dab like in between you know as far as new york florida and in between everything else so I'm, i digress <laughs> either well, either way i think it's a great idea i think i think that um every time there's an incentive so if if a company comes in from out of state and they get incentives from a state yeah. I think in some way they should be able to, the state should be able to help utilize that filmmaker or the company to like start what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Like have an actual, you know, filmed in North Carolina right. and please come back and bring your product so we can debut it, bring any celebrities or whatever. I think that's a great, I think from an incentive standpoint, I understand, you know, bring the, you know, things into the, the state, but also it'd be nice to help promote the state with the right. content that's been produced in that state and bring it back. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting there. It's something that I'm passionate about, been working it on. So, you know, like I said, it's been it's been so great catching up with you too. Uh, we we do this thing a little bit towards the end of the show where it's like uh, solo dubs where we get to give shout outs to whatever we want to give shout outs to. So whoever wants to start, you know, just kind of give your, you know, two to five minutes, just, you know, shout outs or, you know, hey moms, happy birthdays, whoever you want to say hello to. Cause I'm probably going to air this tomorrow, to be honest with you. It's been a great interview <laughs> and it's been great. Like, oh, wow. I don't see too That's much. We, we take 38 weeks. <laughs> weeks per episode so we're, we're a little not quite your speed but that's all right we do take a little while yeah we do yeah but jimmy uh, and i mess up a lot especially me well i mean i don't know if i have any real shout out shout out to the whole fucking world i'm not gonna me. shout out shout to out, jake You're shout out to, i'm shout i shout out to jamie bb for joining oh us God. today it was amazing <laughs> I, well, I mean, obviously we can shout out to the healthcare workers. I mean, people who are putting themselves in, you know, basically grave danger every day. I mean, it's anybody who's, who's out in public serving people, you know, grocery store workers, truck drivers, um, you know, anybody who's continuing to keep our economy moving and help us get the supplies that, that we need. That's, that's part of my shout out. I know that was very, you know, uh, but no, but it's, it's true. Um, Oh, Jake. Parents, sisters, brother-in-law, um, you know, everybody, uh, my, my loved ones um, across the board, all my friends who have been supportive through all this, appreciate you. I feel like I'm accepting an award. Oh, my God. Like, you just keep going. <laughs> I like I to it. talk, Brian. I told you I like to like talk. You so I, I better, You're, like, it, thanking better. random people yeah, for nothing. It. Like, what are you doing? I want to thank Jamie Beebe for reminding me how much I talk. Oh, my God. I'm going to send both of you a little Dundee award. We're going to call right. them the <laughs> you know, I love. I would love that. We need awards. <laughs> I mean, I want to shout out to all my Instagram fans. There you go. There you go. And for those of you, the, for those people that out there that are not your fans yet, so where can they find both of you on social media? Your Instagram um, handles, all that fun stuff. I am at feathergirl77, and our podcast is Strictly Stalking Pod. You can find me at jaked3000, that's J-A-K-E-D 3000 on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as well. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. I really only again. use Instagram these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I only use it too, but it, I, I have the accounts. Honestly. I'm right yeah, there with dusty. you. To me, I, like we have a Twitter, but I try to make sure my other counterparts use that, even though they don't. So I have to like keep an eye on the Twitter, but primarily I'm on Instagram and Facebook. So, yeah, and, amen. And we do we do a trivia every Wednesday too, which I'd love to invite you to on and let me know. We do a, a 7:30 Eastern Standard Time Facebook Live trivia. It's all pop culture related. Fun. So, oh, that'd be fun, bro. I'd love to have you on yeah. there. And again, everybody listening all over the world, you know, here in the U.S., make sure you check out their podcast. Truly, like. If it's coming from me, you know it's no bullshit. Strictly Stalking Pod, iTunes, Spotify, where you can find podcasts. I'm telling you, the first episode, you are hooked from here on out. I cannot wait to listen to, and I don't mean this in like a good way. I sound like a like a pervert. Like I can't wait to listen to this person getting stalked. But the stories, right. like I said, the storytelling is so good, and the way it's edited, and, and just the way you two interact, I'm telling you, it's a it's a great great podcast that I'm really glad I discovered. And 
very honored to have you two on there. As far as my solo dubs, big thank you to, to Jake and Jamie, of course, and all the essential workers out there. Looks like we'll be hopefully getting out of this, if not for the uh, the homicide, murder, hornet bees, whatever we got going on out there. It, it seems like a, we're going to another... take it this year. Murder yeah, hornet. Yeah, I don't even know what's going to happen in June. I think June, I, I predict mummies for June. I oh, just geez. think mummies are going to happen. I mean, maybe the trail. aliens will actually visit in June. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, well, go. no, that'll be July. Like, it'll actually be like the movie Independence Day. They sent oh, the murder God. hornet. The murder hornets are like their little pets. Yeah, yeah. First, this is just know? the infiltration system <laughs> but again uh thank you two so much we will go from there make sure you check out our, our podcast on all the social media networks everything else facebook twitter soundcloud itunes zero dark nerdy pop culture podcast.com is the website courtesy of our good friends over at zipster may a uh, big shout out to our attorney Andrew Newman, attorney at law. Yes, an R-rated podcast like this, believe it or not, does need an attorney. And we have the best in North Carolina. Andrew Newman, his website is attorneynewman.com. He can take care of all your criminal, civil, and traffic court needs in any county in the, in the Carolinas, at least in North Carolina. And that's it. I'm Brian. We'll see you next week. Later. <laughs>